Good afternoon. The Committee on General Government Operation Appropriation and Housing is now called to order. For the record, today is Wednesday, June 9th, 2021, and the time now is 3.46. Notice for this budget hearing was disseminated via email to all senators on May, and, main, and all main media broadcasting outlets. First public notice was issued on May 28th, followed by June 3rd, and then on Friday, June 4th. The committee will hear and accept testimonies on Bill 55-36-COR, the Fiscal Year 2022 Appropriation Act as requested by the Governor. Relative to the Department of Parks and Recs, Recreation Fiscal Year 2022 Budget Request. I'd like to acknowledge the, uh, my colleagues that have joined us today. We have the Oversight Chair, Senator Amanda Shelton, right below me in front. We have Senator Pito to my immediate right. Uh, Terlai, Senator Terlai, and then we have Senator Duenas, the minority leader, and we have Senator Tello Taitabi. I know we have two, three additional senators that are here, and that's Senator Tony Anna, he will be right back, Senator Brown, and we have Senator Paris. But we'll just continue moving along. The general rules of this budget hearing, those testifying on behalf of Bill 5536-COR relative to the Department of Parks and Recs, recreation are invited to the panel, and they are we we'll start out with the director, uh, Rocky Contra, and he has his staff. Uh, I'll allow you, Mr. Contra, to introduce your staff after you've been sworn in, not yet. Okay, but very soon. Written testimony shall be submitted to the committee. Please provide my legislative staff with your written testimony for photocopying, which we don't have, but that's okay. Testimony may be read. Lengthy testimony should be summarized to about five minutes. Hopefully, I know you're going to need more than five minutes, uh, Mr. Contra, but we can work with you. Those testifying will be allowed to present oral testimony. Once you're done, please remain in the room for questions or for additional testimony as may be desired by the members of the committee. Questions and testimony shall be confined to the agenda, which is the budget of Department of Parks and Recreation. Personal inference as to the character or the motive of any senator or any individual testifying is not permitted. Any violation of this general rule of conduct will result in removal from the budget hearing room. Proper form and decorum shall be practiced by all present in the public hearing room for these proceedings. Individual who fail to maintain proper form and decorum may be restricted from providing oral testimony and will be removed from the room. When you speak, please make sure that the microphone is on and that you speak into the microphone. And you please state your name and your title for the record. At this time, I ask the panel members from the Department of Parks and Recreation to rise and for our Sergeant Arms to please swear you in. Every, everybody, all four of you. Uh, please Thank rise you. and raise your right hand. Under penalty of perjury, the all affirm that any information that you provide today, whether it be verbally, electronically, or in writing, be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, so help you God. Mr. Chair, the Earl under oath, you may proceed. Thank you. I'd ask uh, Mr. Contra, the director, to please uh, introduce yourself and your staff, and then we will proceed on with your testimony on the presentation of your budget. Remember, we're working with the budget that was submitted to the administration, and then we'll proceed on, and then we'll go after the other issues of your concern. Thank you, sir. Good evening, uh, Senators. My name is Roki Alcantara. I'm the uh, Director of Parks and Rec. Uh, with me is my uh, uh, park ranger, Mr. Pedro Lizama. And on my uh, left is my AO, uh, Christine Olivra. And then, uh, of course, my SIPO, Patrick uh, Lujan, is here. Go ahead and proceed and present your budget, sir. Okay, the, the budget that we turn in, uh, you look at the budget, it's actually almost the same as the previous year. The budget itself is reduced around 69,000 from the general fund. Uh, so uh, the limited ga ga uh, gaming funds was reduced also by 103,000 four dollars but we got uh, a plus on the uh, uh, tourist attraction fund which is which is eighteen thousand seven seven hundred forty three dollars so the the budget that we have is 
as we presented it uh, for the 2022 is suffice enough for us to operate our department. Uh, like I said, the only thing that is a problem with the, the DPR is manpower. We, we have very minimal manpower. Uh, we do have uh, some augmentee from, from uh, the rapid response that we have. We, we got six, uh, what do you call that, uh, uh, helpers that are cutting grass for us uh, and maintaining the parks. And that was really a help uh, getting those uh, individuals on board. Uh, of course, the problem we still have is the, the, the parks, the maintenance of the parks, uh, and of course, the, the uh, surveillance of the parks, which we still have two park rangers on board. And so that's one of the, the things that we need to address as far as, you know, how can we do uh, surveillance in the parks uh, for 24-7? There's still vandalism going on. There's still a lot of uh, homeless in the parks uh, over at uh, Padre Palomo Park and, and uh, over at uh, Angel Santos Park. They actually I have photos of uh, individuals that are using the restroom as their bedroom. So, you know, those are the, the, the things that we, we are encountering. And hopefully that uh, you know, in, in the future, uh, we will address all of those issues. All right. Thank is, you. Is, is, is that your presentation, sir? Okay. I'll, uh, as far as the, the budget is concerned, uh, I have the AO that will is explain our, our budget for, for 22, 2022. All right. And if, if each one of the panel, please introduce yourself the first time, and then you won't need to do it any further. Then, and then we can move on. My name is Christine Oker. I'm the administrative officer for the department. Our budget is, uh, we just stuck to the budget saving that was given to us. So we have um, 34 classified employees and five are federally funded, 100% federally funded. 13 unclassified employees, two are unclassified, which is our director, deputy director four limited term under the general fund, six limited term under the DOI uh, rapid response, and one temp, which is six months. Our budget remains the same. It's still stuck to, we're still, we have to stick to our budget. Well, last year, or this year, our, our funding was uh, still three six, three million six. 0.6, and then it reduced by 100,000, which is 3.5. We didn't really ask for any vacancies to be filled because we couldn't. We were only budgeted for warm bodies. So the only vacancy that we were able to fund was the archaeologist, which was filled just recently, just last month. And now whatever vacancy we have, which were LTAs, I converted them to uh, recruitment, so that's only three labors. So that's the only vacancies that we have that we're trying to fill. And then we have two other recruitments who are the cashier and then the customer service rep. And that's all we have for personnel. Our supplies and equipment, we stick to what we were given because we were able to get funding from 2020 rolled over. We're surviving on that too. So we're using that to pay for our utilities as well. Water is going to be a problem. We might have a shortfall in water because most of the parks are open now. And power, we're doing okay. But on peak season, that's when it goes up. So we're averaging about 10 to 11,000 a month for power. Um, that's it. And then the director can talk about the contracts. On the contracts uh, itself, uh, we do have a, a continuation of a, a maintenance ground maintenance uh, contract, which is good for 
three years. Uh, we also have a contract to, uh, to maintain uh, Tiguac or Pidi Cemetery. And those contracts are now active. Uh, we had a contract for the janitorial, for the 18 restrooms that we, you know, that was renovated, but uh, that uh, contract, contract expired uh, May 31st, and we sent a request to GSA for an extension because the bid, uh, we sent the bid down there since May 10 to see how they can do, uh, you know, go out for an RFP. But, uh, and so in the meantime, we asked for an extension to get uh, at least two months extension until the, the contract comes out. And so uh, what I am doing right now, because of the request from the, the, the people that you know, the restrooms need to be open, so I'm using my, uh, my clerk, my cashier, to maintain those res restrooms in the, in, in, you know, during, during the weekends. Um, it's, it's really hard uh, to say no to individuals that come in and say, hey, you know, I'm renting a pavilion, but there's no restroom. So what, what I did was, you know, in the meantime, uh, uh, try to, try to uh, get those restrooms clean and, and ready for any of the park goers. Um, the, like I said, the, those contracts that we have our, our continuous contract, uh, which is what we really need in the park. Um, the, you know, like I said, we have 78 parks, and out of the 78 parks, there's just very minimal uh, things that we do uh, that uh, 15 parks that uh, are assigned to just the uh, department to take care of, and there's about 18 parks that are, are uh, adopted. Now, so, you know, there's, there's really things out there that we need to address. Uh, maintenance of the parks is really, really uh, one big item. And I, um, like Senator San Augustine said, maybe about three months ago, that, you know, what happened to uh, EPAN, Talafofo Beach Park? Yes, definitely. That's one of the items that, that uh, is on my list to get, uh, get that park repaired, make it look uh, decent enough for people can, that, you know, to enjoy. But uh, the, the main thing is that you know, we, we don't have the maintenance guys that, we, 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 uh, that can, can go out and, and fix those parks. We, we use the guys for just cutting grass, maintaining the, the park, cleaning up the, the parks. We, we have four individuals right now that are picking up trash from north to south, uh, uh, you know. So we split them up into two, and so that's what we're using right now as far as collecting trash. Uh, you know, our manpower is really, really, uh, really low as far as, you know, uh, the capabilities that we, we need to address. That's it. That's it, okay. Uh, Mr. Contra, do you have any prior year, a prior year outstanding personal service obligation? Do you owe anybody, any of your employees money? That's no, sir, we don't. We don't. We are, we don't have any, uh, prior year. All right. Prior. None. Um, I'm just going to ask the general questions I ask every agency. Okay. So have you procured the majority of your budgeted supplies and equipment for the year? Yes. Yes, we did. Okay. Do you have um, any capital outlay projects being implemented in this fiscal year? None. None. So generally, all those contracts before that was DO, DOI, DOI funded projects, yes, is done. The, the phase one is done, and that's the renovation of the restrooms and and about four uh, basketball courts. Now phase two is being uh, uh, going out, is going out right now for bid. And there's four, 14 uh, contracts on that. Okay. Now, what, was there anything listed there? Because I remember that one time they were listing two villages that were supposed to get, I think it's two minimum, supposed to get a brand new basketball court. One of them was Umatic. Was that ever resolved? The Umatic thing was not resolved. Uh, the issue there was because they built the uh, baseball field in Umatic. 
it was no funding for that, uh, for the Yamadek basketball court. But they actually funded uh, the Mariso basketball court. They didn't, so, they yeah. didn't fund Yamadek that was on the list, but they funded Mariso. Yes. Okay, we need to talk offline on that one. That's more, there's more to that than that. But anyway, um, moving along, did you receive any federal assistance funds for the department? And if you have, how was it expended? I'll, I'll refer that to the SIPO. They're the ones that are handling federal uh, funding. Okay. Did you receive, did you, go sure. Ahead. Uh, good afternoon, Senators. Uh, my name is Patrick Lujan, the State Historic Preservation Officer that runs the Historic uh, Preservation Division of Parks and Recreation. Uh, we receive about, the last year we received $420,000 from the National Park Service on the MPF grant. Um, it has deviated probably only $10,000 $10, over the last five years, so it's pretty uh, stable as far as the allotment from the federal side that comes in. Uh, that makes up, at least for the office, about 45% of, of our budget, with the other 55% coming from the local funds. Um, and I know this is a time for solicitation of, of help and uh, workforce, so I'm going to go ahead and, and do my, my share of solicitation to you. And that being uh, with the um, inclusion of six positions um, with two archaeologists, two technicians, one GIS expert, and uh, one computer data librarian. That will fall in line with a 2017 audit that was placed on our office to get us to where we should be. Uh, that still doesn't entail on the growth of the island and the expected uh, influx of federal funds that will be coming from the uh, ARP. Um, so we're still looking at that angle. Uh, the last we want to do is continue or to be a bottleneck in the, in the uh, process of uh, permitting and, and evaluations from an archaeological and historical pr preservation standpoint. So okay. and what is that value at total? Uh, for the addition? Yeah, or the, the, the one current. you mentioned, you mentioned a bunch of positions. What, what is the total cost for that? For the additional six, we're looking at uh, 418,000. How much? 400, 418. 418, okay. Yes, sir. All right. Any, and any? That, that should take us to a, a stable state uh, of operations, um, you know, with the planning of uh, future growth of, and more influx of federal funds that, that will be coming in. Mind you, uh, every federal dollars that come through our, our island doesn't have to be DOD. It could be any, any type of federal dollars that come through. It has to go through a Section 106 process, which goes through our office. So the, the work is just going to, to increase as we see this coming through. Okay. Did, did you get any other federal funds for Parks and Rec? No, sir. Oh, okay. Is there any way that maybe you're, you're, you can coordinate to get some grants? I'd like to see more, more park patrol officers. They're, you know, the parks are all unattended, but I'll let you figure that one out, okay, separately. Um, Mr. Acontra, um, you have a request funding for six additional territorial park patrol officers and vehicles from the governor. Um, How is that coming along? Are you getting any luck so far? No luck so far, sir. Okay. No problem. Um, I'm looking at your budget, and I don't, I don't know if you, if you included the increase of utilities because of the rates that are going up. Did, what, I, know, I know it couldn't have been factored in because your budget was submitted before uh, PUC started granting all kinds of approval to raise rates. So I'm just curious, and I would like to make sure that, Mr. Contra, you get the opportunity to submit that change to this budget, okay? Yes, sir. We didn't, we didn't uh, uh, budget it for additional... Uh, water and power, but we will submit it. Yeah, provide, to provide the additional cost, because I know the cost has got to go, it's a lot higher than what you got here, I know that. Mm -hmm. Okay, so please submit that. Also, I wanted to find, uh, just to let you know is that this, the 36 Guam are requ is requesting from the governor to give the Department of Parks and Rec $18 million from the American Rescue Plan. And uh, I can, just give me a, a second, I, I will read to you exactly why we're, we're asking for, and uh, it's for the increase and enhanced preservation of the Guam historic sites, 
Additionally, the funding will help the Guam Historic Resource Division, also known as the State Historic Preservation Office, procure more archaeologists to aid in the preservation of ancient burial sites and ancestry human remains discovered through construction activity at historic sites. Three, these projects will contribute to the beautification of the island preparation for reopening of Guam to tourism partners and further address the concerns of the community. The funding will also contribute to maintenance of public parks, patrol vehicles, and cemeteries. That's what this body has asked for. The governor to give you out of the American Rescue Plan 18 million. I know that on that desk behind you or to the right of you is your proposed new budget. And I've advised you out there and I've advised my colleagues that it's got to be vetted down from downtown first, okay? We've got to make sure that they understand what you're submitting. I will ask you still to provide it to my colleagues today so they can walk away with it today because it wouldn't be fair for us to try to ask you questions about a new budget that we didn't see a lot earlier, okay? I just want to make sure that we give you a fair opportunity to present it. If we need to, we'll, we'll call you, we'll do a round table with your oversight chair. I prefer not doing another budget hearing because we, once we get that, that document and we start to um, match it up with what's, what funds are available and when the ARP listing is decided by the governor, what, how she's going to do that $600 million, if she starts dropping money, funds to you folks, a lot of your requests may be already taken care of. But I am concerned, and being a former police officer such as Senator Trelai, I am concerned about the park. I am concerned about there's not enough patrol officers. I see one car going around and I'm like, gosh, I wish there was at least five or six. You got, you got a lot of parks and it's all over this island. And when you mentioned that you having your cash here open, the, something missing here. You know, there's just something missing here. Maybe you need to change the rate that you're renting the, the facilities because it's got to match the cost of maintaining the buildings maintain the cost of maintaining the risk and so forth. But you, 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 you figure this out. But please come up with something so that we can assist you. Because if you're always going to turn to general fund to ask for funds, I'm, I'm going to give you fair warning. There's not a lot of money in the pot. And we're taking a look at everybody's budget and seeing where it will make sense to where we can and are willing to give it. But it will take this whole body to decide that. All right, Mr. Contra, so with that note, please uh, resubmit your budget. Uh, if we can have Vanessa, if we can go ahead and have that, that passed out so my colleagues will have that in their hands, not necessarily to talk about it because we'll ask you questions, okay? But at least they'll walk away with something, but please make sure the administration gets that copy of that document because mm -hmm. once they put a cover letter saying they kind of like agree with it because they do have a ceiling, I know that they present it to you, but well, we want to figure out a way how to help you because we all drive around this island. And if tourism, if, if our community can't even go to the park, what more for the tourism? What more for anybody that comes to Guam? So with that note, um, I'll ask the uh, oversight chair of Parks and Rec, Senator Amanda Shelton, if she wants to ask you folks some questions because I would like to see a, a cleaner budget when I look at your budget, I think there's pretty much, uh, it's missing some parts there, update, and just, just take care of it. And I'd like to see more. We need to figure out a way to take care of the park rangers. There's just, it's just ridiculous. You should at least have at least 10, 10 or 12 park rangers out there. Because you offset and you help out GPD. I know they're for frack. You even help the fire department. You help all the law enforcement. We need to help you. And that's just the only way we can fix the parks. Senator Amanda? Do you have any questions, ma'am? Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, thank you very much to the team for being here today. On the subject of park rangers, um, we passed the law in this legislature for the Civilian Volunteer Territorial Park Patrol Reservist Program. Have uh, any of these volunteer positions be been filled? Anyone from our community come up to volunteer yet? My, my, my name is uh, Pedro Lizama. I'm a Territorial Park Patrol Officer 1. Basically, uh, my understanding is, yes, the law was passed, but the funding wasn't um, allotted with the law. 
So no one has yet to even apply, though? Uh, we've, we've had a lot of individuals step forward and express interest. Okay. So uh, yes, I, I'm sure they, they would happily apply. It's just we've had to tell them to hold off because of the funding issue. OK, you haven't accepted any of the applications? No. OK, do you have an estimate of how many you think will apply? Right now, off the top of my head, we're probably looking at around 10. OK. And these 10 volunteer reservists would be different from the Park Patrol officers that you're hoping to recruit? Yes, that's okay. correct. And the number of new recruits that you're hoping for for permanent park rangers, what is the number? That, that's 10. 10 volunteer reservists and 10 new recruits? Correct. For a total of 20? Correct. OK, and these, uh, these positions, the cost of both of these for the reservists and the new recruits for permanent positions will be reflected in this new budget? Yes, ma'am. Yes, okay, yes. thank you very much. Uh, and during our last informational hearing with the department, we discussed the uh, opening of the Harmon Pool. And I know you and I have discussed it, Mr. Director, but if you can give us an update here for the public, for this committee, because the cost of the pool uh, is a huge chunk of the contractual services. If you can just give us a little bit of an update of when we can expect the reopening. Thank you, ma'am. The uh, Dedu -de pool is uh, being worked on as with our in-house in uh, people. They have already cleaned out the pools. They, they sanded down the pool. They, they painted the pool. And so uh, we just uh, were waiting for the, the, uh, the bid opening for, uh, you know, for the repairs, uh, repair of the pools. And so yesterday, we, uh, they opened up the bid after so many months. Uh, and so we do have a contractor that, uh, that will probably be awarded within the next couple of weeks. And hopefully we can get the, uh, the uh, repair of uh, Dedi Dupo uh, going. And if we can uh, probably open it maybe by August or middle part of August. Yeah. And then as far as the uh, Agania pool, um, we have been meeting with uh, GIDA, uh, DPW, and the uh, Stream Club Association about the Agania pool. They want to start resurrecting the pool. Um, it, it seems like there was a contract that was going to go out uh, in 2015 to do the repairs there, and it never came out. So now we're going to try to resurrect that uh, uh, RFP and see what we can do with the, with the Agania pool. Okay, and the cost for that uh, project, is that included in the new version of your budget? Uh, we did not include that in, the, in, in our budget. Uh, that was going to be for, uh, funded by GIDA. By GIDA. Yeah. Okay. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Director. Uh, another topic that we touched on during the informational hearing were, uh, was the cemetery and uh, how at our public cemetery, we were still utilizing the backhoe from DPW uh, at the time. And uh, I understand that you're here to also request funding to procure one for the department uh, itself. Can you share with us um, the cost of that and the benefit to the department for having your, our own equipment in the cemetery, which the Department of Parks and Recreation is running? Uh, yes, ma'am, we really need the backhoe. In fact, just two weeks ago, uh, DPW is asking back their backhoe. So we went out and priced uh, a backhoe. It's going to cost us about 95000 to get one. And we, we do have uh, two individuals up at the cemetery. Uh, one is already qualified to uh, operate the backhoe. So just getting the backhoe will, uh, you know, will uh, do a lot of things up there. Instead of just digging for the graves, we'll be clean, clearing out some of those old... Uh, what I can say, junk that's there. Yes, there's quite a bit of illegal dumping taking place at the at the cemetery, so yeah, there's, there's some cleanup to do, I understand. Well, thank you for that. I, I wanted to ask you that question for the record to hear about the cost and the need because 
Uh, I think it's a very important part of what the Department of Parks and Recreation does and uh, our, our community deserves a, a place that they can be buried with uh, dignity in, in our public cemetery. So I appreciate the work that you do. Uh, we also talked about the capacity of, of Tiguac Cemetery and what will be needed uh, in a new cemetery in the future. So I know we talked about those plans uh, and are any of those plans uh, developing further or included in this, the newest version of a budget that you're submitting to us? The, um, yes, the uh, cemetery up at Tiguac, we have about maybe four years, four to five years of uh, uh, burials at, at, the, at the cemetery. Now, as far as additional uh, costs, we're, we're trying to uh, see if we can build some crypts, uh, which was proposed before up at uh, Tiguac. And so that's going to cost really uh, almost a million dollars for, for the, the crypt up there, which is about uh, 3,000 crypts. Uh, but uh, that one, uh, you know, we can we can request uh, for that uh, for the crypts to be built, but uh, like I said, we still have about five years up up at Tigua. Okay. Thank you very much. I think that was some of the idea behind the 18 million dollars that the legislature requested mm -hmm. uh, with the ARP funds to the governor. So I'm hoping that that can uh, be looked at further, uh, Mr. Director. Um, and that's all for, for me right now. I know that you know, we often have discussions and so uh, I will uh, save some of my questions for you, but I appreciate uh, you putting on the record the needs of the department today and we look forward to an updated budget so that we can uh, fulfill the needs of the department. Thank you very much, Talib. Yes, Thank you, Senator Amanda. I I'm gonna change this around a little bit. Senator Tello, do you have any questions? Just so we can go around completely. Thank you, Mr. <laughs> Chair. Good afternoon. It's so good to see you in person. Usually we're always on Zoom. And uh, I appreciate the presentation. Uh, but, you know, I'm looking at this latest proposal here versus what I received. So, Mr. Chair, if I, if I made this, the one that we received in our office is different from the one that we just have right now on the binder? Yes, the one that's in the binder is the new budget that's got to be cleared by downtown. Okay. That's why I, I prefer we don't go into that. You can ask them questions on their current budget okay. and what's going on so that we can, and then when, when uh, I would allow our colleagues here to take the binder home, you know, take it back to your office, scrub okay. it, see what we can do, and then we see how we can come back to discuss okay. that and maybe yeah, thank you. be able to help them out. Yeah, and it, it provides quite a bit of information that's important uh, to look through it. For First, I wanted to thank uh, Mr. Alcantara. You, you have very... <laughs> very hardworking uh, patrol officers. You know, uh, Mr. Lazama has answered my call a couple times. I had some questions with regards to parks and recs and, and I really appreciate all the work they're doing and we definitely need to advocate. I'm, I'm surprised that uh, the bill that was passed didn't have any funding uh, to it. I'm gonna pull up the bill right now and, and just, well, after this is done and find out why we didn't fund for those uh, recruits uh, on the stipends to provide it. So definitely need to look into that. As far as uh, old debts, you know, even in, in, in this one, it says prior year outstanding personal service obligations. I'm showing here an old debt and maybe the ASO. Is that Lucy? Is, uh, is her name? I'm sorry. Well, What's her first name? The, the, there is no personal um, debt, yeah. but we do have uh, vendor debt, debts. Yes, an outstanding one for, I believe, 13289 yeah, 200, yes, and that's a, 281. Yeah. How old is that debt? The, the 13,289. It's a debt that, uh, it's an old standing debt. Yeah, it is. A vendor debt. Which one? The 2018? The vendor. The 2018 is just towards the end of the fiscal year. 2018? Right. I'm sorry, what is your first name again? I'm Christine. Christine. Okay, yes. thank you, Christine. Okay, so, um, and, and this is since 2018, and it's only 13289 Are you going to be able to pay it off this year? Um, when the purchase order is um, the ending of the fiscal year, whatever um, money that's still there, we, uh, we're able to use it. If not, and it expires, 
it becomes part of your obligation. Okay. Uh, do you have so any that, that amount just I have to carry it over as part of your obligation? Or and part of your way? obligation? Do you have any lapses? Pardon? Are you anticipating any lapses for 2021? Uh, we have lapses, but uh, we can only pay 20. 2020, we cannot go back. Can't go back. Okay, so yeah, you're going to need... That's the reason why. Okay, so um, we're, you're going to need to request that, mm -hmm. Director on Contract, to, to clear the books on that. You know. Right. Okay, so uh, I guess there's going to be a revised um, budget that's going to be provided us to have additional. In the funding that you received on the federal side from DOI, um, you're gone through the first phase, you're going through the second phase. Is the second phase is the one incorporating the cameras for the, um, for the parks? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Correct. Are you having any trouble uh, getting anyone um, answering your bids or, or any uh, IFBs coming out, contractors or anything like that are having issues? The, the uh, uh, RFB or the IFB is being handled by DPW. Uh, they're the ones, they're the contracting officer for those uh, DOI projects. Okay, so you don't know if they're... So I don't have, a, I don't have uh, yeah. a problem with them. Okay. You know, there's no, uh, there's no delays or whatever. Okay. They have their own uh, staff that, are, mm -hmm. that oh. are committed for the DOI for, for projects. Yeah. What about GSA? Are you having any problems trying to get your things through to GSA? Uh, yes, ma'am. Uh, like uh, previously, we we indicated uh, to the legislature about, you know, some of the requisitions that are being returned. Uh, yeah, we, and and uh, our AO can explain further on that. Uh, oh, we did, uh, we did requisitions that are below 25,000. So we went out uh, through requisition. So that was uh, like 15 requisitions for different projects around Again, or our parks, but they were all returned, and I was told that it has to be in an invitation for bid form, totaling 126,000. So they were all returned, and there was only one that was approved, the Umatic project, that was stuck in between the Paseo projects also. What I don't understand is that if you, if you have the authority on 25,000, right, that's sent to, that you're allowed to, to put through, and then the, a, the GSA is putting them all together, making it look like a hundred and what? 126,000. 126,000 when you're obviously doing it individually at 125 for different projects. Did you question her, her reason why she was, you know, lumping them all together to make it a larger amount than? Well, that, that was, they, they just told us we have to do it that way because it's, uh, because of the vicinity, because of the projects are the same. And the parks, there are parks or whatever projects within our parks, it has to be an invitation for a bid. So that we end no. up, I have to deobligate all of those, except for one, I have to redo can, one. Can I in interject on that? Uh, the reason why she uh, re, re, uh, uh, told us to come, go back and rebid is because they're all in, at the Paseo de Susana. But, you know, uh, one of the project is a trash can Mm -hmm. to, to install trash cans. And, and so uh, the others are to repair those uh, concrete bullards that are, are being damaged all around uh, Paseo. Uh, also the uh, painting of Guerrero Field. Those are, and, and repairs, uh, miscellaneous repairs to those uh, pavilions there at yeah. uh, Paseo de Susana. Yeah. But because it's, it's uh, she told us that because it's on one location that we need to put it out on a, on a bid. Now, we already did our part as far as getting quotes and, and getting the contractor to bid on it, which they're all small purchase contracts, 25,000 and below. Now, I, I don't understand why, should, why I should go out and do a, a whole, uh, you know, one project for all of those. Um, you know, and then I, I, I asked, what about the bonding? Because, you know, anything over 25000 you need a bonding. Uh, you know, you need bonding. So uh, those contractors that I have, the small purchase contractors, the small contractors that are not, probably don't have any bonding, would not be eligible. You know, and so, so that's why we went out with all those projects. We had about 24 requisitions that are small proje uh, projects. 
One of them went through, which is the Umatic Gate. Uh, we, we have a purchase order for Umatic Gate. You know, that's the gate that was uh, that's down at, uh, at, at the Umatic uh, Fort Soledad. So that one, we did have uh, a purchase order. But the rest, we, 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 you know, it was all returned. Well, this is, it, I feel your frustration, you know, especially all that work you did on providing quotes for each project, which is obvious not going to one particular vendor. It's going to different types of vendors, different services. Uh, that are providing on it. So I'm, I'll be, uh, you know, looking into this myself to find out with the oversight chair of GC, GSA. And There's one project in particular, ma'am, that, uh, you know, I, get, I just get frustrated because uh, we sent in this project since August of last year, which mm -hmm. is the painting of Guerrero Field, just, you know, same time as the, the painting of the Paseo Stadium. And so we sent that in and then it was returned you know, how many times it was returned, and then just recently, well, just this this week, it was returned again. For for what reason? I mean, you know, uh, I'm not consolidating any of those projects anymore. Mm -hmm. I'm just concerned about painting Guerrero Field. Okay. You know, and, and if you if you drive by the Paseo Stadium, you see that the stadium is painted, mm -hmm. but Guerrero looks like, I yeah. mean, I, you know, looks bad, <laughs> bad, really bad. So that's, that's one, you know, if she could just give me that uh, PO for Guerrero, I'll be more than glad and satisfied. Then I can take care of the other projects later on. Right. Okay, thank you. Thank you for that insight and with, with the problems that you're having at your agency. We'll try and look into that and try to help. Um, the other one was, uh, with regards to the restrooms, you know, that's uh, like the oversight chair. I can't believe you have the cashier and the, even, I think he mentioned you too as well, going on weekends to open, that is ridiculous. Now, what is the mayor's doing? Answer that, answer yeah. the restroom. The restroom, why should be delayed? The, the restaurants the opening restroom, up on the, the weekends, restroom. was what I was the saying. The restroom, why is to delay at GSA? Oh, the restroom? <laughs> no, the restroom contract is ongoing. It actually it turned in for invitation for bid. Right. Because it already expired after five years, so. Right. We can only fund it up to September uh, 30, so 82,000 is still is already uh, is already encumbered, and we're just waiting for GSA to to uh, work on it, and then I guess uh, do the invitation or do the ad. Well, it sounds like the the contract for um, it already expired, so you don't have anyone there uh, doing this. I don't know how it said you submitted in April 22nd, uh, and. Still nothing has gotten through. Right. So that was April. This thing expires when? June, May? The May end of 31st. May? Yeah. And we're just waiting okay. for GSA to, to work yeah. on it. We right. just had GSA in here too. And I asked them how long it takes for them to fulfill their, you know, uh, these requests that are coming in. They said seven days. About seven days. And I'm seeing this is still sitting, you know, idle right now. I'm not sure what's going on, but it's something we need to definitely look into. Um, with regards currently to try and offset, you know, until this is in place, um, using your own staff to open the bathroom on weekends, what are you doing with the mayor? You know, are you approached the mayors to assist uh, Parks and Rec with any of these um, parks in their villages? Yes, the mayors are, right, boss? The mayors are. Yes, the, the mayors are, are uh, helping us out. Okay. Uh, and also, we help them out. So, you know, it's a, it's a collaboration between Parks and Rec and, and the mayor, mayor's office. So, yeah, we, we, uh, we help each other. But any chance for the mayors to be the ones on weekends? Because, you know, they have their people in, in place 24-7 a lot of times, you know, and especially on weekends, um, that they can be opening the doors and, and taking care of these restrooms. Well, the, the, the restrooms, like At I said... At least the ones in their village, you know? Yeah, it's, it's you know, like uh, Ipo and Matapang yeah. and uh, Inalahan Pool. Inalahan. Inalahan, Inalahan <laughs> Pool. Uh, yeah, those uh, are frequently uh, used by, you know, uh, park goers, right? So yeah. those are the, the, the three um, parks that we open up for, for the weekend. Other than you know weekdays, we don't we don't open up the the restrooms on weekdays. Okay. 
Okay, well, uh, thank you so much. Um, look into the GSA holdup that's holding you guys back and um, greatly appreciate you looking into finding a way to bring more officers on board with only two that you have right now. And they're doing a great job trying to cover everywhere on this island, but with uh, 70, 78 parks, you know, that's, that's quite a bit of parks. So really appreciate the, the hard work you're doing and uh, hopefully we can help you and assist you. Thank you. Thank, right. thank you, Senator Tello. Senator Perez, uh, do you have any questions or comments for the panel? Yeah, thank you, Mr. Chair, and good afternoon to uh, the director and the panel that's here today. Uh, yes, a lot of the questions were asked. Uh, I think, um, yeah, one of the questions I wanted to follow up was the procurement. I did, I did speak with the CPO. I got the same answer that uh, you got. And um, so, uh, um, you know, perhaps maybe we can think of another approach to, you know, there's something called IDIQs. You know, maybe that's something that we can look at and, um, work with the uh, CPO on that one. Um, the other thing, I guess, uh, the other concern is the capacity to um, upkeep the parks. As you mentioned, there isn't enough at Department of Parks and Rec regarding uh, maintenance of the 78 parks. Um, and, I, you know, the answer was partially, uh, you guys provided some of an answer, but are there MOAs with other agencies such as GVB, um, Mayor's Council, uh, Judiciary, other, other agencies that can help uh, close that gap. Yes, ma'am. We do have uh, we we do have uh, entity entities that adopt the parks. We have the judiciary. We do have the mayor, the the mayors and uh, uh, GVB. Actually, uh, we're collaborating uh, at EPAL and also Matapan. So yeah, we we do have, uh, Alliance Club are always uh, coming in the office trying to adopt. Alliance Club, the Rotary Club of Guam, and uh, individuals that want to just adopt a park. There's one individual that adopted the park up at uh, Nimichil. The Nobody really goes there, but uh, she's up there now cleaning and maintaining the park. Uh, so there are individuals that are... are, are I, just the other day, the, uh, the uh, Lions Club of, uh, of Guam uh, wanted to adopt... Uh, the main pavilion at uh, EPAL, you know. So, so those, those we have, uh, we have an adopt the park program that uh, it's really working. Yeah. yeah, that's great to hear. Cause I think um, also, you know, part of GVB's uh, mission is to, um, you know, develop the brand, the Guam brand, and um, you know, perhaps uh, working more closely with them in uh, developing the parks, I'm sure. The oversight chair is, is working on that. Um, and BSP, too. BSP has this um, repositioning strategy uh, study. So um, maybe that's something we could follow up with. Uh, in regards to the Terrio Park Reserve officers, uh, were you able to hire any in the previous year? No, no, ma'am. So, uh, Like I said, we just, uh, we're, we're lacking the funding for that. Mm -hmm. And so, of course, we requested for uh, six new park rangers and hopefully uh, an addition, maybe 10 at the most. And so that would actually help us out on a 24 seven operation on the parks. Okay, thank you. And then also uh, I noticed there is uh, in your budget proposal that you have, uh, you, you uh, submitted earlier, uh, there's no funding for utilities at Paseo. Um, I'm just, my, I guess my question is, do you have enough funding for util your utility needs? The utilities, actually, we, uh, uh, as far as the power, power are concerned, we, we're, we're, we're okay on the power. It's the water that we're, we're lacking. I think we're lacking about maybe 50,000 for, for the water. As soon as all the parks were, were back, uh, were open, that's where we started getting um, the, the, a lot of water usage. And of course, um, I also budgeted for repairs of, of, uh, of water leaks. Uh, there's a big repair of uh, water uh, leak down at EPAL. And so that's gonna be addressed also. Okay, is that in the some budget you recently just submitted or the previous budget? Uh, I, I have it on the previous budget. But, uh, there's, there's a list of projects that I have, there's about about 30 projects that I have that, uh, and it's in the, in the package, 
showing what I did as an, uh, what assessment I've done, and it's all over the village, and it also includes the, the uh, those repairs uh, for like the sports complex and and uh, all the other uh, uh, basketball courts and baseball fields around the island. So I, I uh, went ahead and did an assessment. Now I think about it costs about about 3.9 million. It's in the it, it's in the package. Okay, just one last question. So I noticed in your budget you identified special funds such as uh, tourist attraction fund and the limited gaming fund. And so I guess my concern is that um, these funds are not getting the revenues that we projected. And so are these accurate as far as the amounts, or how did you arrive at the um, the dollar amounts for these funds. So in the director's office um, from the TAF, uh, you had requested about 628,000 and the limited gaming fund about 549,000. Oh, the old budget? Uh, the budget that's certified by, by BBMR? That's uh, what you're talking about? Yeah, I guess the, yeah. yes. It's certified by them. They're the ones who ver re-verified it before okay. they submit it back to us. Okay, thank so you. So that's the amounts. Okay. We did not ask for excess funding for utilities because this has already went in. And then now that we're experiencing all the, the water leaks and stuff, our water bills, especially peak season or summertime, the utilities goes up, especially water. So that's we're averaging like 11000 a month. For parks, for I, the parks. I I think once the uh, the pools are open, yeah, then it's we're going to be, be having a lot of uh, water usage, and we need we need to address that. Okay, all right. Well, I appreciate your responses, and okay. thank you for, for thank your you. work. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Senator Burr. Senator Joanne Brown. Do you have any questions or comments? We're gonna we're gonna go back on like this and trying to save the uh, minority leader and the. Because my other colleagues are here before me, so. That's okay. Are they okay? They're, they're okay. They're good. I just want to get clarification, Director Alcantara, with regards to the pool. You mentioned our, our, I mean, we've heard the announcements that they're going to work on procuring or building a new pool up north, but is, what is the status of the Ganya pool? Is it simply left to deteriorate or demolish, or can it be repaired, or what exactly is the story with that? Uh, like I said uh, uh, before, uh, actually we met, uh, with DPW, GIDA, and the Swim Club uh, Federation, uh, Mr. Frank Flores. We met uh, June 2nd okay. to discuss the pool because yes. we went there uh, to do an assessment. And uh, they, the uh, Swim Club still figured that the pool is still uh, workable. Because the impression we got was it really, because I was a regular user of the Ganya pool, yeah. was the pump issue. I guess the, the pumps running through the system because that pool was refurbished not too many years ago. I mean, they actually drained it and, and resurfaced it, tiled it. Um, and then we heard, you know, the reports were coming out that it was not fixable, that it was sinking, that it was on a wetland. So, I mean, I, I would have to say not just the swim clubs, but the rest of us and others in our community are frequent users of the Ganya pool. If that pool certainly could be, um, uh, you know, rebuilt, and if it is still viable, we'd love to see that facility come back up, and that doesn't prevent a northern pool from being built, certainly with the population's growth up north. Uh, it, it wouldn't hurt to even have two pools, but uh, that would be nice to know if, if the Ganya pool could be refurbished and put back into operation. Uh, yes, ma'am. Like I said, uh, Gita uh, is working to resurrect that uh, RFP that they they had in 2015 to repair a Ganya pool. Okay. And so uh, we're, we're going to be finalizing that RFP to see if it's the, you know, the amount is, is feasible as far as how long the pool will last. Yes. Yeah. Because uh, there's. Well, if, it, if it still has a. I mean, I know it's been there since the 70s, but so have many of us. You know, <laughs> if, it's, yeah. if it's still viable and it can, uh, you know, extend the life of that particular pool, it doesn't, it doesn't prohibit if the administration still wants to move forward and build a brand new pool up north. I don't think we have a problem with that. I, but I but the, there's a lot of members of our community that, you know, that uh, were frequent users and visitors to the Agania pool. I, I think the, uh, the governor uh, wants the Agania pool. Uh, 
assess and make and you know and, and see if it's uh, workable. Right now, the uh, the uh, Olympic pool at Dedidu is on hold mm-hmm. until we finalize the Aganya pool. Yeah. And also, the main concern is to get the Dedidu pool working. Sure. Which is it, it's good now that we have a contractor that will do the repairs. Well, we'd love to hear more of that. I mean, if that pool can has a sustainable life where, where it can be put back into, into operation, many of us would love to see that pool operational again. Um, and I appreciate our, our, our chairman uh, putting support behind having your additional park officers. I mean, we discussed this a few months ago when we had this, and um, it doesn't make a lot of sense when we only have two park rangers for the entire island with all of the obligations and responsibilities that you have in your respective oversight. I don't think it's fair to your two hardworking officers. They have no backup. I mean, of course, they can call GPD or other law enforcement, but it's not the same as having your own team members there. And even more importantly to me, and while I, I know right now we're in a time of generosity of asking department and agencies, oh, please, and, you know, give us a supplemental, increase your staffing pattern, let us know what you need. I've never been in a legislature like this one, I have to tell you, and I've been in six prior to here. Uh, you know, I've, I've, I've been a part of a more conservative approach because, I mean, we can promise the sun and moon, but I don't want to give it to you today and then tomorrow take it away because we don't have funding. And I'm very concerned as we proceed in the budget uh, that we're not going to be able to have enough money in our own economy when we get back to the realities of what our economy can support as we you know, hope for the rebuilding of our tourism industry to be able to fund all the government we want to give them. Because all I hear lately is how we can continue to grow government. And I have a very different view. I mean, there's some areas I, I definitely want to see the government uh, responsible for. Other areas, I, I, I think we have other avenues that can be pursued. But in this particular case, we're where your park ranger officers interface with the public directly. I, those are areas I'm very supportive of because, I, I mean, there's other government positions that the public never knows or could care exists, but uh, certainly where the need and demand for people feeling safe uh, and also having that presence really makes a difference, especially, you know, even in again, yeah, I mean, after five o'clock, you, you know, you, you see a lot of people are getting out, uh, maybe as a result of the pandemic, wanting to get more active, more healthy. Uh, you know, unlike us when we were growing up, almost everyone had a house. Not everyone lives in a house anymore. They might live in an apartment or a condominium. And uh, the park is their open green space to be able to go spend time with their family, have picnics, have barbecues, and things of that nature. So I see that as very beneficial and very healthy for our community. So I certainly support our chairman's initiative. This is definitely an area where I want to see. And there was a time we had more park rangers. What a presence. Uh, but that, that's been many years, and I just really think, I mean, this, the conservation officers, those are the areas where I think uh, that direct interface with the public is something we need to be supportive of, and I'm, I'm supportive of the initiative to increase your officers, because uh, I, I see that multiplying across the community and brings tremendous benefit. And right now, if you're going to ask a lot of our people, feeling safe in their communities, probably at the top of the list, next to being healthy, uh, with this pandemic, feeling safe is the next best thing. And certainly your officers working with the other law enforcement, with GPD and the other police, airport, port police. Um, you know, there's only benefits that can multiply from that. So I certainly uh, support that. And I'm, I'm happy to hear our chairman supportive of it so that we can give you more resources. Uh, with that, Mr. Chairman, thank you. I, I don't have any further comment uh, with regards to that. I mean, we can talk about the cemetery at another, <laughs> another date. I, I saw your news story a couple of weeks ago, but I, I think those are things we can probably talk at, a, at another day. But thank you very much, and thank you for providing your, your input this afternoon. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Senator Brown. Senator Pito, do you have any questions? Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. I just want to echo uh, what Senator Brown had mentioned about the shortage of uh, park ranger and all that, because, you know, I was looking through your budget uh, and you only have two uh, uh, park rangers for, and I just wanted to ask you, uh, Mr. Director, were you, were you able to uh, add any funding for additional park ranger in this year's uh, 2022 budget? Not, not the 2022. Because I'm not seeing no. it. No, uh, we we actually have four park rangers. Uh, Every, you know, we try to fund the four park rangers every year, but uh, it's not, it's not uh, funded. Yeah, yeah. and yeah. you know, uh, uh, Mr. Director, also in March, I don't know if you remember, but the governor signed Public Law 36-3, 
uh, which created the Territory Park Ranger Patrol Program. And I just wanted to find out what is the status? Are you recruiting for that? Or I just wanted to know the status uh, the if you have the. the uh, uh, we were never given the funding for it, so we couldn't recruit. Huh? We weren't given any funding for to recruit uh, park rangers, so we were never were not able to submit any personal actions. Yes, because you know the the uh, the chairman and I were just talking about. Uh, supporting uh, the additional funding in its totality because we know for a fact that you only have two park ranger and actually you're manning like 77 parks, right? Right. And, and, and just by that calculation, you know uh, there's a, a big gap of shortfall in there in as far as a person is concerned. And I want to thank you. I want to commend all of you for uh, Rock, especially you, because you know, you've know you done a lot since you got on board. And um, I'm very uh, confident, and the chairman and I are very supportive. So we were talking about, after this, we're gonna talk about whatever financial assistance that we need to give you. Uh, we will try our very best to make it become a reality. So thank you very much. Uh, thank you very much, Mr. Chair. Th thank you, Senator. I, excuse me, my colleagues, but uh, they're having some technical difficulties. We would have to pause for about five minutes. All right? And if they can just put a recess on the screen. For um, Okay, thank you. We're, we're back. Uh, we have a, another staff officer, a staff was, was called in, and we'll ask, um, I, I guess this is William Schmidt, right? I don't know. I, I hope I didn't prosecute your name, but we'll have, uh, if you can please rise so the Sergeant Arm can swear you in, and then we can continue on. Okay. Go for it. Under penalty of perjury, do you affirm that any and all information that you provide today, whether it be verbally, electronically, or in writing, be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth will help you out. Yes. Mr. Chair, he's under oath. You may proceed. Thank, thank, you. thank you very much. Um, Senator Adder, do you have any questions? Because Senator Duenas didn't have any questions, so and he had to go take care of something. But Senator Adder, do you have any questions, please? Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Yes, um, 
Thank you, uh, Director, and for your team for being here this afternoon for your budget request. I, I do have a couple of questions on, on the cemetery side. Uh, currently, Director, how many burials have you done within the past year? Actually, we're, uh, Senator, we're averaging about 10 burials a week. So there, there's, there's a lot. Uh, we're looking at maybe, you know, for the past year, over, well over 500, 600. So about five, 600 burials. Yes, so. yes. Okay. And, you know, like I said, we're averaging uh, 10, 10 burials a week. And so with that said, you know, I was looking at your budget request on, on the uh, Schedule B contractual for burial services. And for 2021, authorized was 24000 And your request on FY22 is only $6,778. And that's a difference, a decrease, actually, of 17222 what, what's the what's the reason for the decrease? Oh, that was because DPW was going to give us the backhoe, so we weren't going to be paying a, a, a contract. So that's the reason why it went down. But prior to that, we were we were give, uh, had, we had to do a, quote, a quotation and then get quotes to uh, hire a backhoe operators all the time or a company to do it for us. So now that we're still using DPW. They reduced it, we reduced it down to that amount, but then if they take it back, now we're gonna to have to ask for funding for uh, our purchase of back home and get funding for additional stuff. That yeah, we're so do. that's what I was looking at is that's that, the reason. I know the director had mentioned that uh, DPW was asking for their, the return of their back yes. home, but even on the revised uh, copy of your, your request, the difference was not added back onto the for proposed uh, budget oh, of 2022, uh, we didn't change anything for the for the co the contracts. We only did the the proposal is only for the staffing pattern. Yeah, but that's what you I was know. saying. I'm, so we I'm, need to add. Increase. Yeah, I'm surprised that you guys didn't put it back in, knowing that DPW wanted their yeah. their backhoe back. And that way, if a backhoe is not purchased, you guys are not short in contracting out. What what does a contract cost? How much is a contract for a backhoe? rental that you guys were doing previously before uh, DPW came in? No, the, uh, it's an MOU with the DPW that, uh, you know, because before they were the ones burying the, up at, uh, at TWAC, but then they uh, gave Parks and Rec the, uh, the responsibility to do the burials. So yep. uh, we're, we're the ones uh, burying, uh, you know, we have two individuals up there that are, are permanent, uh, uh, you know, workers that are going to be burying individuals. But the backhoe uh, and the backhoe operator is from DPW. Okay. And so that's what we're trying to uh, do is purchase a backhoe because one of those two individuals that we have is a backhoe operator. Okay. okay. And then also, I didn't see on your contractual for to purchase were uh, lowering devices, church trucks, canopies, chairs, those those equipment, you know, the, the equipment that you utilize every time for a burial, right. that you guys didn't put it onto your, your request? We get through, at times we get donations, so we don't really, uh, we didn't really ask for supplies for the cemetery, but uh, if um, we don't get those contributions from uh, from outside vendors that uh, help us out, then we have to come back to the legislature and ask for funding. Uh, prior to DPW helping us, we used to pay about uh, 250 to 350 per burial. That's how much it used to be per burial. Okay, and then also you're looking at having enough space for approximately four to five years for burial and then now you're looking for to the build crypts up in the area. The how much are we encroaching onto private property or other federal government or GovGuam properties with, out on the boundaries of the cemetery? No, no sir. No. We uh, we had uh, land management uh, go out and do a survey. Well, we're not encroaching. We still have, like I said, around. Uh, 
three or four, five years of burial. So we, burial got, we got enough space for about yes. 3,000 more burials up at, at yeah. Tigua Cemetery. Yes. Have you, you know, I, this has been discussed in the past, and I don't know if um, it's been uh, talked about recently or when you became director, sir, uh, a public-private partnership where you turn around and let the, uh, I mean, Parks and Rec should be concentrating on, on the parks and the recreation side, and probably the cemetery side, you should work and get into a public-private uh, partnership with a, a, a private entity to, to manage and and operate the cemetery. Have you guys discussed that? Well, you know, we previously discussed that. Uh, we went ahead and did a contract uh, to hire the maintenance uh, contractor to maintain the cemetery. So that's uh, a contract for three years. And, and you know, we, we got it for a minimal price. Uh, and uh, yes, definitely, we we'll, you know, we'll look into uh, a private uh, what do you call that? Uh, What's that contract? To, what does that contract cost you per year? Uh, it, it's the, about almost fifty thousand. Fifty thousand per year, and what yeah. does that consist of? It's to clean the part, the, the cemetery, cut the grass, and and remove all the, you know, the uh, candles, the flowers, and all that. That's not being. So uh, that's grass cutting for? Is it? As a grass cutting twice also. a month is it twice a month it's twice a month on on uh, dry season and three times a month on wet season mm -hmm. I see okay but have you discussed about just completely going into a, a public private partnership the burial services the maintenance um, the upkeep upkeep of the cemetery have you guys discussed that? No. No, that, that's not uh, discussed. Uh, but we will look into it, sir. Okay. And I think that's a, a good idea. Mm -hmm. I mean, at, at least we, you know, our resources will be limited. Uh, yeah. yeah. Uh, Mr. Chairman, just for the record, I'm not in the cemetery business. So I have no conflict <laughs> of interest here. Uh, the, the other question I wanted to ask is, how much do you currently charge for the cemetery plot? And what does that charge cover it's uh, each each burial is five hundred dollars and that covers the you know the the, the back hole and the, and then the two individuals that do the burial exactly so, you just flat so it covers it yeah. covers the personnel the back hole and yeah. the plot yes okay and when was the last time that uh, you have increased the or adjusted the cost of burial up at Tigua cemetery that was like been a while. 2003 or two is the last time they increased it from 250 to 500. So about 20 years. Yeah. So, and have any discussions been made or talked about within the board and, and the management about uh, adjustments in, in the fees? We, you know, as far as we the fees it. and all that, I know we need to address the fees. Uh, we just have to get our board together uh, and meet. Uh, yeah, as, you know, we, we don't have a quorum right now. Uh, there's two uh, members of our board that, uh, that expired. Uh, so once we get uh, the uh, number of uh, board members, we'll, we'll address those because we need to address the park fees also. You know, the park fees has been $15 forever mm -hmm. for a pavilion. And so, you know, uh, that would also be uh, addressed by the board. Yeah, because you know, I know that the government's not in the business to make a profit, but we need to at least cover expenses of what it costs to rent a backhoe, the personnel mm -hmm. that it is up there, and then the plot itself. Of the five hundred, where does the five hundred dollars go to when it's paid? General mm -hmm. fund. General funds. General fund. And have you guys discussed about probably uh, creating a cemetery revolving fund? just for Tigua Cemetery so that you guys will be able to utilize the funds that are uh, deposited to maintain, to perhaps purchase a backhoe. I mean, at, at uh, what are we looking at? You said 500, 500 and uh, 600 burials at $500. You're looking at $300,000 in one year, you would have been able to purchase a backhoe. So something to consider perhaps in the future to create a cemetery revolving fund so that 
the cemetery can be self-sustaining in maintenance, in burials, and uh, perhaps even perhaps building of the crypts. Well, yes, sir. Once, once we get our board members uh, together, uh, we'll discuss those uh, revolving funds. You know, there's also recreational funds that we, we need to just uh, address so that, you know, like rental fund, uh, rental of the Paseo Stadium, the Guerrero Field, the sports complex, those all go into the general funds. Yeah, so, so we're looking at trying to get that uh, funding to just remain at parks. And that's what I'm trying to do here is just trying to find ways to help you guys out to ensure that you guys will be able to maintain what you have with the funding that comes into uh, Parks and Rec. And hopefully once you establish it and uh, it gets um, put into place that you, you see what the funds will be coming into the cemetery. Uh, coming into Parks and Rec and to help your department. We do have a parks, a public recreation services fund that replaced uh, the recreation revolving fund back in the late 90s. They created this account, so every funding that our department receives from the cashier and it goes to general fund, there's account numbers that goes into for, for the stadium, for, for park usage, but we have no control of that. It goes in there and then it goes all into general fund, and then they give us what we receive uh, when they're doing our budget. Yeah. So, so perhaps that fund is actually some of the money that we that we uh, deposit on a daily basis. Yeah. So perhaps then the cemetery revolving fund, in that way, you'll be able to utilize that money to to maintain. Yeah. And because there is an account update. for yeah. just the cemetery, but mm -hmm. it goes into general fund, and then they turn around and give us what we. Yeah, but sometimes it goes into the general yeah, fund we and, and we don't get it back. <laughs> we don't really see it all. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Well, and thank you for your budget request uh, and thank you for being here and hopefully we'll be able to thank you. help you out and you guys with these uh, issues and uh, we look forward to working with you. Thank, thank you, you Mr. Senator. Chairman. I appreciate it. Thank you, Senator. Um, <laughs> Mr. Contra, make sure your revised budget, get it to the administration. Get them to sign off on that. But I'd highly recommend you make sure you cover all the bases in that budget. I was looking at it, and exactly what some of the senators mentioned, the back hole. Maybe you might want to include it. It's a good, it's, it's, a, it's, it's a good shot. Ask, because we'll never know if you need it, other than you're asking for contractual. If you ask for it, then we can measure it from there. Then when you talk about the funds that are there that goes to the general fund, you don't ask for full access of that money, so it goes in, it goes to an account, only you can use it, but you've got to justify it, because at the end of the day, the OPA will audit your activity of that account, and you make, it will make sure that you'll report exactly if you're spending it correctly. So we just need to, if you want to be, if you want to get access to money, especially when it's, they're paying for the use of your facilities that you're required to maintain, if you don't ask for it, we're not going to be able to write it in the budget. So we're willing to help you. You've got to help us help you. Okay? That Thank being you. said, um, this will conclude the budget hearing for the Department of Parks and Recreation. The committee will continue to receive testimony. Uh, please address your written testimony to the Committee on General Government Operation Appropriation Housing. Submit it via email to Senator Joe S. at gmail.com or to my office located at Rand Care Building. Second floor, suite 3, 761 South Marine Corps Drive, Tumani Guam. Sijun Smalasi for your attendance and participating in today's hearing. And for those at home, thank you for watching. This budget hearing on Bill 55-36-CR relative to the Department of Parks and Rec Recreation is now adjourned at 5.04. Please be safe and take care.